Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview. Ipswich Town versus Everton. First game back after the international break. And it's a tough one, Jack, isn't it? Because Ipswich haven't won a game. Mm. Which is, as an Evertonian, is literally the worst thing that could be you know, ahead of us is someone hasn't won a game. They're at home and they're thinking, we're going to win a game because we're playing Everton. I think you'd rather be playing 2010 Barcelona than an absolute pump, wouldn't they? You think would be more optimistic about going yeah. there and causing upset than We've we got would. a chance! Yeah, uh, rather than not being the team to potentially give someone their first win of the season. It's... Um, Look, it feels like an opportunity to, for prime Everton, doesn't it? For Oh, here comes Everton, but mm. that's our job at the weekend. It's to deny that. It's the plated expectations of what it should be on paper. We're the better sides. They're the promoted team that, you know, although they've impressed people, they've not won a game. We have, on paper, we have the better team, the more Premier League experienced mm. team. We have to not let any of that noise come in at the weekend. Don't let that be the case. Don't let people make the easy joke like we're making now. Go there and put in a good performance and play to the standards that we should be playing at. No, you're absolutely right. And that's obviously an old stereotype that we put on ourselves as Everton fans. Never, you know, Nobody else looks in and sees that, I would imagine. It's it's very much an Everton fan thing. But I think as um, if you look back at the last game, obviously the last game we played, for, uh, Newcastle United at home, obviously getting a nil-nil, the first clean sheet of the season with a much changed back line. Mm -hmm. I suppose that can give us confidence going into this game. Going with, we're taking, I know it's taking its time, but we're taking steps game by game, aren't we? We were scoring more goals. We got a clean sheet the last one. We have had uh, a, a number of injuries and we've got a number more for, to, for this game. But we've sort of got that, I don't know, I don't know what you'd call it, but that organisation may be back. Just that general organisation of where where you would expect I mean for a lot of teams they get that on day one or the quality they have means that in the first few weeks of the season uh, they have it but for us it's taken a little bit of time to settle down and that that does give me a little bit of confidence going into this game that I do feel like as a squad even though there has been injuries we have settled down a little bit now yeah it does feel like we're out of that craziness uh, the opening mm. few weeks obviously the uh, the two nil leads in two back-to-back -back games and um, not winning one of our opening games and obviously the all the noise about the manager's record in september obviously we're past that now and yeah it has only been one win but it's been a win and a draw either side as well hasn't it uh, a clean sheet in our last mm. game as well so by all means not brilliant form nothing to write home about but things do feel a little bit calmer than he did especially over an international break as well i think mm. over the last international break the previous one coming off the bournemouth game a lot of noise a lot of panic it's been a little bit more subdued over the last few weeks and to be honest after the last couple of years i don't mind that but i do think a bad result takes us right back into that it takes us right back into that panic into the chaos mm. we avoid all that with a win because we're meeting expectations if we go there and get a win yeah i think this is we're going to a period now where in this international uh before the next international break um if, you, if you're pulling it up in blocks that everton have to seriously start getting some results and results mm. means wins one win so far really shouldn't be acceptable but you know with it being the start of the season, you can understand in many ways and the injuries. But now with this block of fixtures, there's winnable games. And Everton have to look at that. And for every game that passes, like in Ipswich away, where you look at it and think, this is going to be someone at the tail end of the season now. We don't want to be anywhere near, really. Mm. We want to be well away from these, like we were in the, in the last few weeks last season. We want to be away from these. And the only way to establish that and... and, and put these teams down is by is by beating them is by taking the three points by going it i mean at least not at, you know at least not losing to them but i just mm. think in this set of fixtures Evan have to make sure that we are getting points on the board because we obviously know what follows and even though that looks scary it just just in general that the what what um December brings in terms of just the amount of games, never mind the quality of the teams you're playing, just the amount of games and whether your squad can cope with that. This for the next few weeks is weekend to weekend against teams that are in and, in and around. I know some of them are a little bit better, the likes of Fulham and that, but it's 
it's so important that we don't just look at these games and go, oh, it's another one, it's another, oh, we got a draw, okay, take that one off, oh, we got a draw, take that one off, or whatever. These, you have to be looking at it and thinking, you know, for, for every for every three games, you should be picking up a minimum of four points, really, mm. if you're going to have have that comfortable little margin it's the form you need isn't mm-hmm. it and i think we do need to be better than sides like this and i mean zero disrespect no, to no. Twitch by saying this but i really like kieran mckenna i like a lot of their players i like their mentality as a squad there's a lot of fight in ipswich town but we need to be above sides like this because regardless of how highly you rate them they're a newly promoted side yeah. that in most people's opinion are amongst the favorites for the drop mm-hmm. that's just the way it is we need to be above that this season and yeah you can necessarily not win these games against these sides and still finish well clear of them across three games across all competitions last year we lost to Luton twice we still finished well clear in the league so it's not the be all and end all but this early into a season when the league is so tight and a win for Ipswich would take them above us you can avoid all that noise that comes with a defeat and all those comparisons and all that, oh, is this going to be our level for the season again by getting a win in a game like this, despite their qualities and despite where they can hurt us, we are on paper a lot stronger. And I think this time last year, this is when things were starting to turn, when we'd beaten Brentford and we'd beaten Bournemouth and I think we went into a set of fixtures after that second international break, I think we got beaten in the Mayside derby. We showed a lot of character. But then we did have a decent run. And Palace it, game as the well. Pal- yeah, and it all sort of... we There was a really good improvement. And then obviously we, we lost the 10 points going in, in, the, in the middle of November, didn't we? But we lost those 10 points. But things over this this break were really, really good for us. Um, and I think that's something we have to... We have to you have to have that confidence in the team. And you were right what you said before about like, you know, being everything settling down and you don't want to be because let's get it let's get it right. Let's get it right. We lose this game on Saturday. The pressure is massively mm. back on Sean Dyche. Okay, we've just we've just had a little spell of games where we've been all right. But suddenly you look at it and go, Well, that's you've only won one one game. And You've just been beaten by a promoter team who were winning their first game. And all these things start to mount up and you're like, then you're looking at it going, next week, oh, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's, it's, this is football. This is this is what, this is what happens. Um, new owners coming in. All that kind of thing. It's Everton have to be asserting themselves. And, you know, when we went to Leicester, that felt like that kind of day as well. And really, we should have won at Leicester. But we have to take that experience of what, what happened at Leicester. You know, if we do go 1-0 up, we have to put the pressure on and make sure we get everything right for the rest of the game because Ipswich aren't a, aren't a bad side at all. No, you know, they've not. done all right up till the last game against West Ham where they were caught out. Um, we, we have to take the game to them because if we don't and we sit off... They're a nice little football inside. Mm. They'll probably have a lot of the ball in this game. They'll have yeah. a lot more of the ball than we will. And they'll the fans will sense that thing of, well, we've got the ball and they haven't. We can hurt them. We can do something to this team. And I think that's what happened at Leicester. In the first half, we were very confident. We scored the goal. We were going forward. And then the second half, we just went to Leicester. Yeah, you have the ball. Mm. And the more the team has the ball and more the fans are pushing them on, we have it at Goodison, you think... We'll get some managed because we'll make chances. These are going back. The confidence isn't there to drive on as a team. And that's what we've got to be very careful of on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned the Leicester game, but the game I'd be looking to, to be honest, was Southampton in mm. the cup because I see the similarities here. And, you know, on the day, on paper, if you look at the two teams that were put out, Everton's mm. team versus Southampton's team. Everton's team on paper was far superior. Yeah, Southampton absolutely dominated the ball, had the better chances of the game, and were the team in charge yeah, yeah. with their second team out, by the way. Yeah. Going to Ipswich, especially going away to Portman Road, with them having probably close to their full strength squads, they are going to be on the ball. Forget about the fact mm. that we should be better than them. Forget about the fact that we might be favourites for this game and we're hoping to win. They're going to have a lot of the ball and they will have opportunities to dominate the game. Now, mm. possession as a number doesn't necessarily yeah. dictate how the game goes, but for Ipswich, an attacking team, a team who do get on the ball, 
I do look for that forward pass probably a little bit more than Southampton do as well and yeah. crucially have a better striker. They are going to have opportunities in this game so while I think we can be realistic about the fact we will have less possession we need to keep hold in this yeah. game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's have a little look at uh, the match pack for this game. This Saturday, Everton take on Ipswich at Portman Road Stadium in the Premier League. The two teams have played each other 52 times. Everton have won 20, Ipswich have won 14, and they have drawn 14 times. This is the first meeting between Ipswich and Everton in any competition since a 2-1 win for the Tractor Boys at Goodison Park in February 2002. Everton have failed to score in three of their five Premier League away games against Ipswich, including both such visits so far in the 21st century, 2-0 in February 2001, 0-0 in October 2001. Ipswich have won three of their last four Premier League games against Everton, as many as they had in their previous 17 league meetings with the Toffees. Ipswich remain without a win in seven Premier League games so far this season, They've never gone eight games from the start of a top flight campaign without a win. There you go. Um, not the most uh, endearing. And doesn't that just fill you with confidence? Yeah, not the most <laughs> endearing numbers in the world. Obviously, 1995 was the last time we beat them in the Premier League. Paul Rydell goal. That secured our uh, Premier League status that season. Um, it does feel like a little tricky one, doesn't it? You know, these, mm. these I always feel like, I don't know what it is, like a mentality thing. The, when you have to travel really far and it's a bit of a strange journey and it's a small, high ground and and um, it just it just adds to the, I don't know, it just adds to the, to the complications of it all. Mentality is a big part of it, especially yeah. at, you know, these smaller grounds, tighter to the pitch as well in him. Um, in an area, okay, they have Norwich near them, but the actual local area, they all support one football club, don't they? So it's, mm. it very much feels like you're heading into enemy territory, doesn't yeah. it, when you're heading into an area that is devoted to one football club. And yeah, we have struggled at these places in the past, mm. looking back at the record over the years as well. Okay, it was a very long time <laughs> ago, but it's not particularly no. great, is it? So it is going to be a big test of character as well as tactics. Yeah. Let's have a little look at uh, the Ipswich side from the last time they played, which was against West Ham United. Uh, as you can see, um, Calvin Phillips in there, of course, who wasn't great against um, West Ham. Uh, Jacob Greaves, someone we were linked with in the summer as well. Dar O'Shea, who's come in. Uh, ben Johnson, who was uh, who come in over the summer as well. Uh, Omari Hutchinson, who's been, a, who's been a good player for them. And of course... Liam Delap mm. playing up front, who's been absolutely brilliant. I think this season since coming in from Manchester City. Let's have a little look at his numbers. So yeah, you, as you can see there, it's uh, played seven, four goals, xG of one point one six, big chances created zero, which is a. Uh, not great, but uh, I like the look of this lad. We had a chat mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago uh, on uh, on Round the Tower on Toffee TV Premier about uh, this young man's potential, and he he does he does look like um, I wouldn't say a player we've missed. I don't think we would have been in for him in the summer for twenty million pound. I do look at him, and you could see him playing for Everton in terms of like you can imagine the next the next step up for him would be a club like Everton or maybe a club like West West Ham mm. um because he's certainly got something about him and and you know looks like a big lad and doesn't 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 tend to mess about in front of goal yeah, I mean, just looking at his XG as compared to his gold return, he's massively overperforming mm. in that regard. And yeah, you know, I don't want to sell up switches striker for, no, but, but they've, they've made a good sign and, and bringing him in, yeah. put it that way. And I know he, in terms of the big chances created, he hadn't created any, but just looking at his heat map, then he does pop up all over the pitch. Mm. So obviously willing to drop deep to come and receive the yeah. ball and help move it on. I like that. It's a proactive forward and yeah, a great finisher. He's done really well for them so far this season. I'm sure it'll continue. Noobs, he does look a natural finisher and he is going to be one that will require a lot of attention at the weekend especially considering there are mm. some questions over who might be available for our defence yeah, yeah. well let's just have a look at Everton's team from the Newcastle United game um, 
James Garner, who was man of the match on the day against Newcastle, he certainly isn't going to be available for this game. He has an issue with his back. Um, Centre back. Do we think Jada Brantwaite will be available? Of course, Michalenko I think is available for this game as well. So do you, could you see Ashley Young maybe going to right back and then Michalenko going to left back and possibly Jada Brantwaite coming in? The manager said he's fit. It's just the training programme is a little bit maybe not where they'd want it to be. So do you think he'll come back? But I don't know because he said they're going to make a decision in the next 24 hours. By the mm. time people are watching that video, this video, the decision within the club has probably already been made. Mm. I don't know. It's I'd love to have him back. And look, he's, he's our best player. So if he's available, you want him to play. But with that type of injury, it's not the type of injury you rush a player back from because mm. it is one that can play up and cause you further problems. I really don't know. Only the manager yeah. and the fitness staff will know the answer. I hope he's fully available and ready to play because it'll be a massive lift for us. And yeah, I do think it'll be the full-back partnership of Michael Enko and Ashley Young. Nathan Patterson is apparently still not available despite being yeah. involved in games for the last few weeks. So mm. he'd pick Ashley Young regardless, wouldn't he? Because he obviously rates so. him. So. No, I think so. Um, yeah, Bros is still out. Chimit is still out. Patterson, even though he played 90 minutes two weeks ago, apparently is not ready yet. Uh, Timmy Raboonham is injured as mm. well. Um, he's got a foot fracture, which is going to keep him out for weeks, apparently. James Garner, as we mentioned. Brandweight, as we talked about. Hit me. Seamus Coleman should be available. Michalenko and, um, and Jai, who uh, there was a, an issue with him for Senegal, but has come through that and should be all right. So, yeah, I think Michalenko will come back in at left back and, uh, you know, as we said, they're probably swapping over for, for Young. and Yeah, it's, um, again, Everton injury problems. It's very, very strange, isn't it? Because I think last season we had a decent decent record, but mm, I don't know, this summer it's it started really poorly and it hasn't really settled down. The manager has said a few times of when we get players back, but every time we seem to get players back, we lose a couple of others. Mm. Yeah, the last season we did have one of the better injury records in the league and we were fortunate in that regard. Of course, we had a small squad, so it, even if we mm. did have a couple of knocks, it felt maybe like a, a bigger crisis than it was. But yeah, this season it's not been the case. We've lost a lot of players to the, um, you know, multi-week periods for um, mm. relatively long absences. Uh, James Garner and Timmy Raboonham are the new ones we found out about this week and obviously having the scare about and Jai as well. He took a knock in a game, didn't he? That, that's a different yeah. situation. But of picked up a, a fair few training injuries this year and um, look, it could just be complete bad luck. Sometimes clubs have these situations, but I do hope within the club that looking at every potential cause, mm. every potential problem that maybe leads to this and looking at that and analysing that because although we probably do have a slightly stronger squad depth than last year, no club can afford to no. have this many players injured this no. often, especially not us. No. So yeah, hopefully we get that under control or if it is just a bit of bad luck that passes, but it does leave us slightly short in a couple of key areas for this game, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, I think the message is stop kicking hell out of each other at uh, Finch Farm. Um, no, I mean, listen, it's a tough, it's a tough game. As I said, I think they've they've, they've only lost a couple, haven't they? So, um, we we have got to go down there with the right mentality, which I'm sure we will, and start strong and 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 don't dip like we did say like like at Leicester. Uh, mm -hmm. These do stay in games. It's only the last game I think was was a was a bit of a strange one at West Ham. The way the way they sort of felt felt a bit, but um, we've we've just got to be strong and have a mentality for the next few games that starts picking up points. Yeah, very important we establish ourselves in this game early. If we let them have long periods of dominating mm. and making chances in front of their home crowds, they're going to be up uh, for it. And let me just say as well, the Ipswich fans do believe this is the game. Mm. They do believe this. This is their, this is their one where they, this, will, this is the one we win. This is the one we get our win in. And yeah. that's that from from on one part that's that's terrifying and as as an Everton fan that but but sadly that's where we are right now that if Twitch believe fans believe this is the one that they're gonna get their first three. Well it's in. impossible not to look at this team, especially over the last few weeks and some of the results we have had and go, Yeah, mm. they're the ones we can get on top of and they're yeah. the ones we can make crumble and they're the ones we can be stronger than. But we just need to deny them that, get a good hold of the game early on. 
don't let them grow into it don't let them feel confident get a couple of goals up and kill any idea yeah. of them dominating us yeah there you go let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one are you a little bit nervous going there or do you think just go down there we play well we should beat them let us know your thoughts in the comments make sure to give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already if you want more great videos join us over on toffee tv premiere the link is in the description and the qr codes come up on the screen now see you later